So this is a follow-up to a video that I did about a year ago titled Don't Try to Awaken Kundalini, a cautionary tale of the Kundalini experience. And I wanted to do a part two on this one for several reasons. And so I thought that I would both reiterate what I was trying to get across in that video and add a few other things as well. So the basic point that I was seeking to convey is that the spiritual path should not be a goal-oriented path. The spiritual path should not be something in which you've heard about such and such experience of someone else's and so you're thinking to yourself, wow, that sounds really cool. I'm going to do whatever I can, you know, find uh, in order to have that sort of an experience. Not that there's anything categorically wrong with that, but ultimately the spiritual quest should be a matter of coming into the moment. That's really what it comes down to is, is being more present, more aware, more conscious, more whole, more deeply grounded in your own being. And that's, that's really the ultimate uh, goal, if you can call it that, of the spiritual quest is simply to be here now, to be more in the present moment. And in the course of that uh, intention of being more present, then a lot of different things arise. People have all kinds of wild and crazy experiences. So the spiritual quest is meant to be a matter of, of being here now and seeing what arises in the course of being more fully in the present moment. And many different things can, can take, take place and transpire and, and are transpiring for many people. I get fairly regular uh, messages from people talking about their various experiences and what does this mean. And, and, and so it is more important to be allowing of what occurs as opposed to seeking something in particular. In the course of meditation, to, see, to simply see what comes up, what transpires, and, um, and to keep in mind that happiness is not about finally achieving some specific experience. Finally you have a out-of-body experience and then you're going to be happy, or finally you remember your past lives and then you're going to be happy. Finally you have a kundalini awakening and then you're going to be happy. Um, none of those things are really a, you know, what happiness is about. Happiness is about being comfortable in your own skin, being present in your body and in this moment, and about having a, a basic understanding of the nature of your soul and having acceptance for that. And happiness is other things too. Sometimes happiness is ice cream or having a wild out-of-body experience that, that blows your mind and gives you a lot of stuff to think about. I mean, that's all, that's all icing on the cake, as they say, but that isn't the cake. That isn't, you know, what really brings us joy and happiness and satisfaction in our, in our lives. It is more a matter of simply coming into a place of, of true beingness within ourselves, of, of just soaking up this present moment and and feeling the divine flow of uh, the universe, the, the cosmic energy, the chi, the prana, flowing through our being, as opposed to being separated and uh, being unable to receive that divine light of God that is, that is all around us. So this brings me to a, uh, an, an important point about Kundalini awakening, which is that Kundalini awakening is about tapping into that divine flow of energy. That's what Kundalini energy is. is it is, it is the, the, uh, uh, the prana, the chi, the, the divine source of energy within this universe being awakened in a, in a major way and then coursing through our being. So, in uh, at the very beginning of that other video of mine, that I said, don't try, try to awaken Kundalini. That doesn't mean that Kundalini should not be awakened. And so I want to explore that point a little bit further here, which is that 
I am most definitely not opposed to the concept of Kundalini awakening. I'm very much in favor of allowing this, this divine um, energy to come forth and uh, to transform us in the process. However, um, it can be a very intense experience. Some people have very beautiful, joyous, loving, blissed out experiences with Kundalini awakening in which they're just overwhelmed with love and, um, and energy and creative impulses and stay up all night making art and, and, uh, um, and it is a very positive experience. Many people, on the other hand, have very intense, powerful, overwhelming, challenging experiences, as was mine, especially in the beginning. And it can be extremely uh, traumatic and intense. And the reason that it is difficult, the reason the Kundalini awakening can be difficult, is not because Kundalini energy itself is, uh, is imbalanced, is wrong. Christians are always posting um, comments below my videos saying Kundalini is Satan, it's a demon, and all this stuff. Kundalini is life force energy. Um, it is divine energy. It is the energy of God. The reason that it brings about challenging circumstances for many people is because of energy blockages within us. And I talk about this in a lot of my videos. Which is that uh, we have energetic um, blockages within our being, within our energetic self, our soul. And when this intense energy comes along, when we awaken the Kundalini, uh, then what we experience is the pressure of that energy ramming into the blockages within ourselves. So in the same way that if you uh, stop up a hose with, with dirt or whatever, and then you turn on the faucet full blast, then it's going to create a pressure. Maybe a hose isn't the best example because hoses are very sturdy and they can deal with this, but, but just to get the general point across, is that you're then going to have a force of pressure on a blockage and it is going to create tension within that hose and, uh, and so it is the experience of that tension, that pressure within us, of something that is, that is uh, seeking to move through us but is being blocked. That is why we experience pain and challenge and difficulty in the course of the Kundalini Awakening experience. And so the reason that it is uh, not necessarily advised to set out a goal of, I'm going to try to awaken Kundalini energy because I've heard about it from other people. Um, sounds cool. A friend of mine had a really awesome experience and I want to experience that. Is because uh, you don't know what, what kind of experience you're going to have. You don't know how prepared you are going to be for that, um, for that influx of intense spiritual energy. And it is much more important to focus on the removing of these energy blockages within us in various other ways. And there are many different techniques for, for dealing uh, with these energy blockages within us. And this is what I was doing on my path before I had my Kundalini awakening, and I'm sure is what ultimately led to it. But uh, if you awaken this energy when you still have a lot of unresolved stuff, when you still have a lot of uh, um, unresolved blockages within you, then that is why it becomes a difficult experience. Whereas if you can focus on um, cleansing your soul without, without a express intention of, I'm going to have a Kundalini experience, then if Kundalini should awaken at some point, you will be much more prepared for it. You have removed, released those energy blockages within you. And thus, when this, this flow of energy comes coursing through you, then you won't experience that intense pressure and the pain um, and extreme confusion and everything that can go along with it, but you will simply experience that divine energy flowing through you, at least, at least to some extent. Most likely there will still be uh, stuff to deal with and, and uh, to resolve within you, but you will, you will be much more prepared to handle this energy. And also there are amazing experiences that you can have um, along the way regardless of whether you experience a Kundalini awakening in particular. Um, I had all kinds of, of really intense, amazing, beautiful experiences before my Kundalini awakening. Um, just in the course of my spiritual path, having amazing meditations and 
uh, yoga practices and, and uh, uh, working with energy in various ways. I talk about all this in my book, Kundalini and the Art of Being. I explain my whole, my whole path um, of, uh, of spiritual awakening. I'll go ahead and put a link down uh, below this video to both that book and my other book, Kundalini and the Power of Awakening, which is a more succinct book that, that just focuses on some helpful ideas for dealing with Kundalini um, energy and Kundalini awakening. So, um, I don't mean to convey that, that there is anything necessarily wrong with desiring to have a powerful spiritual experience. Uh, I also have a video that I, that I put out after that other one titled, How to Awaken Kundalini and Access Personal Power. So it might seem a little contradictory that I've put out videos both saying, don't try to awaken Kundalini, cautionary tale, and how to awaken Kundalini. And I'll try to uh, clarify that by, by uh, saying that I don't think that there is any ultimate yes or no answer on this topic. That it isn't, you know, stay away from Kundalini, it's bad, or Kundalini is, all, is always good in love and light. But rather that it is important to have as much information and knowledge and awareness of these types of spiritual energies if you are seeking to uh, go on this spiritual path of awakening your true inner potential and seeing what, what is within, which I fully endorse and say that's what life is about, is, is uh, awakening your inner potential and finding um, you know, who you really, really are, coming to self-realization, uh, discovering what sorts of experiences you can have in the course of this spiritual path. That's what makes this life really interesting and, yes, challenging, but uh, it's such a much more fulfilling and meaningful and purposeful life than simply being focused on the outer world and um, getting that brand new car and finally making a million dollars and getting the supermodel wife and, and uh, all this stuff that our material modern world is, is caught up in. The inner quest is where it's at in my view and it is a uh, endless journey of constantly increasing um, mysteriousness and uh, uh, challenges but also satisfaction and um, in the course of it you come to a place of deepening consciousness which uh, is something you carry with you for the rest of your life and beyond and that is part of what the point of all this is about is recognizing that fact that we aren't going to be here in this physical human body for the rest of eternity we are going to journey on from here at some point and as John Lennon said you don't take nothing with you but your soul. So um, make uh, your soul and transforming and evolving your soul a top priority um, while you're here on Earth in, in this human body. So, um, so I also put out the video How to Awaken Kundalini and Access Personal Power. And I just explained some of the things that, that led to my own experience of Kundalini Awakening. And they aren't really traditional uh, techniques or anything of, of, of pranayama or, or postures or whatever. That was part of it. I was doing yoga and, uh, and pranayama and meditation. But I give some other ideas on, on how I managed to tap into um, the uh, potential energy within me that is within all of us and get some of that energy moving. And it was things like emotional release and this uh, um, uh, bodily vibrating technique that, I, that I've talked about in a few different videos and experimenting with, with uh, psychedelics um, and a few other things. So um, it's fine to have a desire to discover your full potential and, uh, and to seek to go within and find your, your real personal power. But just to keep in mind that it is important to be in the present moment. 
and to not be focused on a goal out there somewhere of what you want to experience because that is basically going against the fundamental grain of, of the spiritual path which is just to be at peace uh, with the now, with the present moment and to, and to fully be here. And so to seek to be fully, fully here and in the course of that see what might arise and be open to what might arise and, and to seek within and um, we are all different and, and have unique and different characteristics and traits and tendencies um, and so we're going to have different types of experiences so just be open to, to what might occur and uh, if that should ultimately lead to something along the lines of a Kundalini awakening then most likely you will be more prepared to handle that experience having focused on simply building up your um, your inner potential and clearing out these blockages within us as opposed to seeking to leap straight into such an experience when you might not be uh, truly prepared for that uh, intense flow of energy. So I hope that that um, explanation was a little better than my previous video. I think I said um less in this video than the previous one. Um, so uh, again, feel free to check the links down below this video to my books, which go into much more detail about my experience. And feel free to subscribe to my channel for lots more upcoming videos. Uh, I will also be posting videos about my adventures here in India. So uh, lots more coming up. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Namaste.